It is us, Peekaboo. Hi, welcome to Bead with me and Jonah. Maybe you saw earlier we did a two minute break with Jonah. <laughs> Thank you to Mo Williams. Um, he got to cut out some little <laughs> little guys that Mo William uh, had printables. And so we got to color those in and he did a little skit and I thought that was super cute. So, well, welcome. I just wanted to hop on with you guys today, uh, do a little bead with me session. Um, it looks like they're tightening things down and I'm getting the enjoyment of having a new rhythm, doing homeschooling. Hey, Christine. <laughs> and <laughs> seeing how um, well Jonah learns from his mom. So far, you know, we're on it, on and off, but at least he's doing a little on-camera stuff. So you had lunch with him yesterday, uh, and we're going to do a little bead with me session today. Um, and I thought I'd just go over maybe some of the basic crimping uh, techniques using a crimping tool or just doing kind of the nitty-gritty, just what you have to have. Um, look. Christine says, hi. Hi, Jonah. You know, Christine has a cat that looks just like ours. Yeah. What's our cat's name? Ivan. Ivan, yes. <laughs> Both getting older. Want to hold on to those sweethearts. Okay, so um, let's go over to our project here. Uh, doing a button bracelet and this is one that you can not have to use a clasp so I thought you could uh, join us here go over to our station so this is um kind of what I thought we could make today let's see maybe have to I was thinking you would put it like in front of you, like over there. And get something to stand the thing up in front of you, like if you want. Okay, well maybe I'll have you hold hold on to it. No, I was gonna do something else. I was gonna put something in. Okay, well we're 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 going live right now. Okay, so um, this is starting off with a button, okay, and then going to be ending here with seed beads, so you don't have to have a clasp. Um, so pulled out some buttons that I have here. Couldn't really decide what beads I wanted to use, so I kind of chose pearls and crystals. Um, yeah, I like all those metal beads too. You know, those are using some of my favorite. Uh, using those cornerless rounds, um, using those potato chip beads. Thank you, Jonah. Jo Jonah's got the string that we're going to uh, use today. Oh, I'm going to use that for you. For you. <laughs> okay, and then I pulled some pearls and crystals here out. Um, I thought that would be a nice quick string, so kind of what do we like the combination? Um, I thought I'd do something fun, too. Uh, I haven't done it before, but, you know, I like these, what I call my official term of sticky outy things. And, <laughs> but these are actually called daggers. Um, we got some new color finishes in, and I thought that this uh, might be kind of cool to go around the button instead of seed beads. So, we're going to pull out... Let's see, a combination. What do you think, guys? Do we have any any votes? I was kind of thinking. Um, I'm kind. I'm wearing green today, so this was what's on your wrist Wednesday. So you can see what I'm wearing. I was kind of thinking green. Here's what's on my other wrist here. If you like these, we'll have them available for sale and the parts and pieces. So that's how I thought I'd do our shop with me. Um, session today is kind of maybe by project doing little project kits okay so do uh, you like red and purple crystals huh so this with oh purple crystals oh 
maybe these ones. And then these are pearls here, so I couldn't decide. So maybe like this, what do you think? All right, let's do something like this. I like, I, I like that combination. And then, okay, people are voting on copper and red. So what do we think? Do if I do we do we like these or do we like these purple? Oh, okay. Were you talking about maybe those purple? There, Christine. What do you think? How about that? Yes. We like purple versus the copper. All right. We're looking at these buttons here. Is that a cool button in the middle there? Could do something like that. Hmm. Or do we like something like this? Change out the button and do something like that. <laughs> Little Jonah, this is what I have on my side here. Yes. <laughs> we, we got... Copper beads. Oh, I like these copper beads better. Okay, so copper beads with that button. Mm. Alright, I think I kind of might be going for this metal button. Alright, done. Done deal. Alright. Let's see what we got here. And then I found some, uh, I think some seed beads that might can go in there if I, I need those, those to be. Okay, guys. So I am doing a button bracelet. We're kind of making it on the spot. I thought that would be fun, interactive. Um, this was kind of the sample that we're going on. But I'm going to kind of change it up. Uh, one I haven't done before here. So let's see. Let's see. Put you around and put you over and down. Kind of station. I'm so far working station. Okay, so we chose uh, copper. The red crystals have a purple flash to me mm, in the picture. That's why online is so hard. Kind of a reddish orange, but it, it's going to look good because these aren't super purple. So we decided on some pearls, crystals, uh, some copper daggers, copper button. Okay, let's see how that turns out. I think that'll be a nice combination. Alright, so let's get my tools out here. Okay, using the tools I'm going to use today here. Or I'm going to show we use blue cutters and then doing chain nose pliers and what we call the crimping pliers. Okay. So I'm going to cut these open. I'm thinking I like these, but I think we're going to need some copper. Uh, you know, and that one all metal one, I, I kind of like these copper potato chips. Let's see if you can see that. I think I'll put a few of those. So, this is kind of what we're looking at here. I think we need a little spacer. This might be a little big though. So I have these other ones also. And we'll go over a crimping technique. So today what I'm going to be using is something called flex wire. Okay. Um, different companies make it. Most important 
what you should look at is how many number of strands it takes to make up that particular thickness. So if you're using a fine, 21 strands is really good. Um, that's done by Softflex. That's what we like to carry here. Um, and the more number of strands, the more flexible it is, more durable, more kind of like thread. Okay. And then we're going to be using two by two crimps. That's kind of a standard size crimp. So whether you buy plated or buy sterling um, and gold filled, two by two is kind of the standard. And that's what you'll need to use in the uh, crimping pliers here. Okay, which is a two part process made for a two by two crimp. Okay, we, I'm also going to show the chain nose uh, plier technique as well. which is what we're gonna kinda use for the button bracelet. Okay, so button bracelet is kinda doing the have to have what you need to do in order to create necklace bracelet, whatever you're making, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach our button. And since we're doing copper, I'm gonna Pull a copper crimp here okay and in this case I'm um, putting on a crimp then putting on my button here okay and then I'm gonna go back Going back through the crimp here, okay. So you can kind of see I'm tightening up right here. see a nice close-up so I've pulled the wire through the crimp through the button then back through the crimp okay and then what I'm gonna do is And this is the have to have, which is taking a chain nose plier. Going to cover the crimp. And most important, you want to make sure that the entire crimp is covered. Okay? Because if you've only done part of it, then not, you're not taking full advantage of the two millimeter. Okay? So I'm just going to crush that flat. And the goal is to get all the air out of it. So I tend to like to turn it over, okay, and crush it one more time. Okay, so we're looking to make it as flat as you can. And I like to give a tug, see if I've done a good job, might as well start off. Sure. Now, that is simple, simple crimping. Okay, that's what you have to have and then you tend to do the other side the same way. So we're going to string on a design here. Let's see, we're going to do a pattern, simple pattern. I think we'll do a, I'll start off with crystal beads, I like this, these copper. potato chip beads. We have these in several sizes in silver, gold, and copper. I'll post some of those pictures a little bit later. So 
And I can't believe school's out for the whole rest of the year. I have to think about what I'm going to do with Jonah. <laughs> And, and teaching them a lot about the bead business. So I thought this could be kind of a good learning experience for both of us. So we're learning to add and subtract money. Finding a lot of online tutorials. As well to be very helpful. So feel, feel free to share those with me. I'm kind of doing this a little bit random. I don't really have a design idea in mind. Now I'm trying to tuck this tail in here. Okay, so that way then gives a little added security. If this crimp were to ever slide, you'll have as long as that tail is before you're going to lose any beads. Okay, so just string, stringing on a design here. It's a rainy day. A lot of things are closed today. Since we have the less than 10 people at a time. But we got lunch uh, delivered, so I'm trying to support uh, any small business that is open. So we thank you guys for giving us a call and video chatting with me. Um, That's what took me a little time here today as I have my virtual hours here so you can call the shop. We can work by phone, but I can also send you pictures. It's really easy to do so, so don't be scared to give it a try. It's the new wave. It's what people are doing. It's, it's kind of nice. Like my new tagline is embrace the pace. You don't have to be in such a rush all the time. Let's see, do I almost have a bracelet there? It's getting pretty close here. I think uh, make it so someone uh, Someone can buy this at our shop session this afternoon. I like it. I have enough to make more. Let's see. Coming out nice. Can't go wrong with pearl and crystals. All right, let's see. That feels pretty good. I think we can get that around the wrist. Average wrist size is 7 inches. My wrist is a bit smaller. But average is 7 inches for women, 
8 inches for men, so if you're making guys bracelets. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is, this is kind of the length I want it. Okay, so at the very end I'm going to put a crimp. Okay, this is, this is the little item that holds our entire world together. A little crimp. Okay, has good size hole. Okay, in a minute, sweetheart. Let me finish this live video. Okay. So now I decided I'm going to do these dagger beads. I think you're going to need a lot of help. Yeah. You know what I need help with? So normally you would put on... I want to tell you what I need help with. Would you hold on one second? Normally I would put on maybe some seed beads. Okay, so in the sample... Um, we did seed beads, so right now we just put on the crimp, and now I'm doing the beads that are normally around here. In this case, I'm using daggers. We're going to see what that looks like. This has been really fun. I've been getting a chance to sit down and make jewelry. <laughs> get to go around the shop and uh, pick out things that I've been wanting to make. Alright, so I kind of don't know how long I'm, this loop is going to be. I think it's going to have to be bigger than that. So I'm going to keep on string because I've got a good size uh, button to have to go around. And I'm kind of thinking, I'm not curving as well. I don't want them to be sticking back and forth since, uh, I don't think. As long as I can get the button through. Let's see. How's that going to look? I think I need them all sticking out the same way. So I need a teeny tiny bead. Some little teeny tiny beads. Let's see, I'm pulling out a size. All right, I had to grab a size. 11 seed bead okay size 11 is about a two millimeter bead okay all right so that didn't take too long okay so i'm back by the crimp put on some of these daggers now putting a little seed bead in between because i I kind of want it to all stick out the same way. So daggers, when they were kind of tight on the strand, kind of look like this. Okay, so when you buy them, they might look a little crazy. But when you put a little space in between them, they make a really nice collar. And I'll kind of show you what that looks like when I get this strung. They'll have kind of maybe a sunflower look. See how that's coming out? So 
it has it kind of flowing out the same way. Give me a picture of what that looks like. I like that. It's going to be pretty. Let's see. I think we're going to need quite a bit of the strand. And I have some more strands left. Happy to kit this up. Estimating, I have 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That seems like a bad number. Okay, I'm going to take that off. Okay, I've got a dozen of these dagger beads. Okay, I'm going to put it back through the crimp and through one of the beads because I just want to know how big this loop is. Okay, so that's not rocket science here, but... I, I don't know how big I want this loop to be. So you can kind of see the way this loop looks here. Okay. I'll get better with these videos here on being able to do different angles, but. All right, I think that I need a few more beads, but this is going to be the idea, you guys. Let's see if I can get it to lay flat. And... I want to just be like this crazy when it's on the wrist here, which is why I'm trying it out. That looks pretty cool. Let's see, add a tiny pearl on each end of the row of the daggers, like the seed bead. Yes, that probably would have been good. That would require me to undo, though, this whole little section. See, so you're saying right here. Think could use one. I think I'm gonna definitely add add another dagger here. I couldn't quite get her around the button. this does kind of testing things out so thank you for joining me we're going over the art of crimping which we'll do here in a moment okay got that size here looks pretty good definitely goes through there much better that looks nice, honey. <laughs> I think it might be a smidgen too big. I need your big. help, though. You need my help? Okay. I need your help with building a house made out of these. Oh, okay. Or a little place that will fit me inside with the little roof. 
<laughs> I don't think that is gonna fit you inside of that roof. Okay, so I pulled off another bead here. I can help you in a moment, okay? I'm almost done with this. Life with a child at home. And you know, this is a good project for young children too, so Jonah knows how to string. That fits pretty exact here. Okay, so this time I'm going to use the crimping tool to crimp this. Okay, so this will be a little bit harder to see, but we're using the crimping tool. Okay, and you'll see. Let's see if I can get it focused in for you. Okay, we have a two part. You'll see one that kind of looks like a hard lima bean, and then one that's like an oval. I like those copper potato chips also. Okay. Hold on one second, I just need to. Can you do something nice with that? I like it. Not at the moment. Can you find a little something you can do? All right, there's a good angle. You can play can write me a, a, a sentence. We'll look on your. Do you know why I wrote that? Why'd you write that? Because I said I was growing up. You are growing up. I said I was going. You are going up. Need it. I see that. Need it though. But All right, so we're there. gonna take. I know. I know what it's This says, crimp, and we're gonna do that first crush say? here. Okay, so this is a little hard to get into, but I'm doing that first crush, and that was using this, this piece right here. Okay, so on the back of the crimping pliers, you can see exactly what we're doing. So I just did step one, we stuck it in there, and we crushed it, okay? So then we're gonna move on to step two here. So now we're gonna turn that crimp sideways. So. Okay, so I've done that first crush. One of the uh, things that they say to do is to line up those two wires so that they're parallel versus crossed so that when you do that first crush, then those wires will be the same in line with the first, the little indentation. So if you can see that right there. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn this sideways. Okay. And kind of wedge it in there. You'll kind of feel the top and the bottom sit in. In this case, I'm using daggers so I didn't make it ex very easy for myself here. Okay, now I've kind of crushed those together. And you know, sometimes I tend to take my chain nose pliers and go in there and make sure that's been crushed well. So I don't know if you can see on that side. But it's bending. And I'm squeezing really hard 
card right now. Okay. To get that crimp crumb. Crimped, crimped here. Okay. So again, you can pull here. Okay. And then I'm going to cut off this excess wire. I'm going to move this down for a little bit of flexibility. Put this in here. Where is Delta? I can't hear. I don't. Where is Delta? Uh, is it on? There's the two iPads on the table there. I might have made oh. Might might have made it a little tight. Okay, and there we have a fun button bracelet. Okay, I use daggers to close it off. You can also use seed beads. So thanks for joining me here, guys, today. I'm working on getting these edited too, so you can have a quick and easy version. Um, I'm also going to show you not on this so maybe we can get a better view but there are some things that also are very nice something called wire guards and something called crimp covers okay they come in plated as well as the sterling the gold filled we carry those here um, and I'm going to kind of show you how those work as well these two things didn't exist when I first started, you know, 30 years ago. Um, flex wire was something called tiger tail. So these are kind of the things that we're using right now. Okay. So these are nice. I'm going to use a class you're probably familiar with little lobster here and get, get a little bit more string here okay so here's gonna be a nice quick run over of what we just did uh, for the button bracelet so we're gonna take flex wire okay we are going to let's see get a crimp here going to string the crimp through. Okay, I'm going to go through the clasp. But first, we're going to put something called a wire guard on. Okay, so we're going to go up through one side. It's a little horseshoe shape. What this does is protect that wire on the inside along where the clasp rubs on it. Okay, then we're going to go back through the other side. Okay, so you can kind of see that there. Then we're going to attach the clasp before we go through the crimps. So you see that? Okay, then you want to go through the crimp. So you're holding all of this and push the crimp all the way up. Okay, and then I'm going to pull everything tight. You know, I'm going to squeeze this together here. Okay, and then I'm going to push the crimp up. See how kind of nice that looks? Okay, now I'm going to take that crimping plier. I'm going to throw it around first. <laughs> and again, we're going to do part one is right here. Part two is right here. Okay, so we're going to first line our wires up so that they are, we want them kind of parallel here. You can see mine. 
hit them parallel. You kind of feel the crimp sit in the knot perfectly when you know you have the whole thing and you'll see you don't see the crimp on my left or right hand side of that plier. I'm going to crush that. Here's a quick look at the back side. There, we can see it. Okay. Now I'm going to take this to the side, doing the second crimp. I'm going to see if I can get a good angle for you guys. Okay. And I'm just I'm crushing it, can kind of see. Oop, it slipped. squeezing that tight. Sometimes, okay, so it's looking pretty good, but sometimes I like to take my chain nose plier, okay, I'm going to take that and I'm going to crush it real tight. I can never be too sure here, okay. So this is kind of what we're looking like right now. So we've used the wire guard with a 2x2 two two crimp on some flex wire. Okay, now I'm going to put a crimp cover. Okay, that's this, this thing right here. That, as it sounds, covers the crimp. Okay, the hardest thing about a crimp cover is, one, I like to use sterling because it's a little bit easier. It's a softer metal, so you can put it on easier. Right now, I think I'm using a plated one. Um, but first thing is, is these guys are slippery. Um, they come in two sizes uh, that we carry here is a three and a four millimeter, most common sizes. Um, if you are crushing your crimp just flat, um, you'll need to use a four millimeter crimp cover. If you uh, have used a crimping tool like we just did here, uh, you can use a three millimeter. So depending on the size uh, beads that you're using, if you kind of are using like eight millimeter beads and four millimeter isn't gonna be a big deal. So crushing it flat can make it easy, especially if you're using a crimp cover. Okay, so I have a four millimeter crimp cover here. So I have to hold the crimp up as I lay my crimp in to the cover here. Okay, so it's gonna cover and if, if when I close it, it should look like a bead. Okay, in this case, I'm using my simple chain nose pliers. Um, one of the things I tell you is if you if these slip off of the crimp cover, go ahead and let it slide off because you don't want to crush a crimp. You are trying to close a crimp cover so that it looks like a bead. So we don't want to mash it, right? Okay, so I'm going to be holding the wire down as I push the crimp up, okay, to get a good angle on things. And I'm kind of going to grab both sides and close it. And you'll kind of see right now that it puckers a little bit. Let's see if we can get a side angle. Okay, puckers a little bit, which is fine. But then you're going to need to then you're going to need to push a little in this way and push a little that way so that you can get those babies to kind of line up even. Plated ones are a little bit tougher. So if you go from plated ones to sterling, be careful so you don't crush it. Okay, so that ends up looking pretty good. See, I have an edge, edge there. Okay, so then you have a round looking bead. Okay, uh, a very nice finished look. Um, 
and actually you can see that I, <laughs> I didn't get it on the on the crimp there that's so funny okay so I guess when I was re-angling here I didn't realize it wasn't over but I can do another one here here how about I do another one okay so getting it laid in there again See how you heard it slip off of there and I just let it slide. This time the crimp is in there. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of what it's supposed to look like there. Okay. So this is a nice uh, swivel lobster. We carry those wire guards. Those come in two sizes, in a fine and a medium, so depending on what size wire you're using, the wire guard is that horseshoe uh, shape. And then crimps, the crimps we use today are a two by two crimp. They come in a variety of colors. Carry some plated ones here, um, as well as uh, sterling and sterling and gold filled. Um, two by twos, there's also tor uh, tornadoes, twisted crimps. If you're just crushing your crimp flat, okay, that's all you have to do. Um, you can use a twisted crimp, kind of gives a little decorative design. Um, and then we also have the crimp covers for you, okay? So thanks for joining me today uh, with a little bead with me session. Uh, I enjoyed having you guys here. Maybe join me in about a couple days. Um, you'll see it kind of post live on what I'm going to do next. And um, maybe a little lunch with me and Jonah session. Uh, we are enjoying a little bit of me time. So thanks for joining us here today and have a great afternoon. I'll do a shop with me session uh, at about two o'clock. So thanks for joining me. Have a good one. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Oh. <laughs> uh -oh.